everybody, Nate Lee here, and I have a PSA for you. Stop playing hard when you're trying to play loud. And I know that sounds completely counterintuitive, but I'm gonna show you what to do instead. Uh, before I do that though, if you could take a second and just hit that like button and subscribe to this channel, it's a quick and easy way to support the channel and it's completely free. Also hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos. All right, as promised, here's what you should do instead. We'll start with why you shouldn't play hard trying to play loud. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate it because I don't want to make the Wonder Bat go out of tune hitting it so hard. But uh, all you have to do is try this. Play really hard and see how in tune you are after one song. It's one of the main reasons that people are out of tune so much in jams on the mandolin is they're just trying to be heard and it feels like, well, if playing soft makes me play quietly, then I probably need to play really hard in order to be heard. But the reason it doesn't work that way is that when you hit a string really hard, and you can try this right now if you don't need to be in tune, it really is worth trying it just so you can see the difference. If you hit the string really hard, you get initially a very loud sound, but that peak falls off really fast and the instrument doesn't really keep vibrating very much. Instead, you need to hit it a different way. You need to make big strokes. And I know that seems like it shouldn't work, but I'll tell you why it'll work. The big confident strokes with the right technique cause the mandolin to resonate really, really well. That's what makes volume. Long notes that are also loud sound very, very loud. Long notes that aren't that loud still sound pretty loud because a note that's sustaining and a note that's resonating really nicely, it hangs there in the air. People can really hear it clearly. A lot of times it's not that you're not loud enough, it's that you're not clear enough. Now, sure, if you play with somebody who has a monster banjo and they play their banjo way too loud, yeah, you're not gonna hear your mandolin all that well. But if you're playing with a banjo player who doesn't quiet down when it's time for a mandolin or guitar solo, then they're just not a great musician and maybe you can find some better musicians to play with. So here's what you should do. It all starts with making sure you have good contact on the pick. That means not holding it where it moves around, and it means not holding it where you don't have much of your hand touching the pick. So if it's sticking out way like this, it's gonna be a lot harder to play loud because we need nice dense fingers holding that pick in order to get this sound. Now I can hold it just like this. There are times when holding the top of your pick can be helpful, but not like this. A lot of people hold their pick all the way up here. Listen to this. I'm doing everything else the same. It's very quiet and the tone sucks. But when I go back to this, just a normal pick hold, I can play loud. Now I'm not playing very hard here. Here's what I'm doing instead. I'm playing very wide strokes. So this distance here goes from here <laughs> to right here. That's how wide my pick strokes are there. A couple inches. As a general rule, play the widest strokes you can play for every tempo if you want to be heard. Now that's going to change as you speed up but the idea behind it still works and you can still play loud when you play fast. You know, Jake Workman said to me once, he said that people say, well, you can play fast or you can play loud or you can play with good tone and you can take any two of those, pick any two, you can't have the third one. And he said, I decided to do all three. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> um, after studying with him, I was able to hone my skills as well in that direction. And now I'm gonna share some of it with you. I don't do it exactly the way Jake does, but it's not dissimilar. So what I'm doing is I'm moving in a scoop shape and I'm throwing my arm into it a little bit. So I'm not just wiggling my wrist like this, but I'm actually turning like that the same way that I would if I was playing backup. Another great Jake, Jake Jolliffe, says that his favorite mandolin players, the ones he considers to be the greatest mandolin players, their technique looks the same whether they're picking single strings or whether they're playing backup. And when it comes to somewhat accomplished mandolin players, usually the wrist tends to be, uh, the wrist and arm tends to be more free and functional when playing backup. And quite often the hand will start doing really weird things when it's time to play some lead. 
Now we won't go super far into that because I'm going to show you exactly what to do and then I'm going to go teach a private lesson <laughs> so that I'm not late. So when I tell people to pick wider, you know, the first thing they tend to think is, all right, well, maybe that works for the E string. How's that going to work for the A string? The E and the, a, the E and the D are too close. I can only pick this wide. There's no way to pick wider. But when you use this motion, which is kind of a scoop, then you're going to be able to pick wider because on the downstroke, your pick is going to come in. It's going to hit that string. Here, let's get two strings. It's going to hit that string. And as it turns, it's going to clear the string below it because the pick has turned. Do I have my comically large pick here? I do. All right, so when it goes to hit that string, the pick hits the string and then turns like this. And it just barely misses the string below it. On the way back, it just barely misses, turns like this, heads back this way, and in this direction, it's gonna barely miss the string that's above it as you do this. That motion looks kind of like this. It's a little bit of arm being thrown into a wrist motion. And it's, if you've studied back up with me at all, then it is very similar to that motion just put into single notes. Now, I'm totally oversimplifying this. I'm like, oh yeah, you just gotta, you know, hold your pick right, get the exact right contact, and move your arm and wrist in perfectly, and don't hit any of the other strings, and you'll play loud. It takes some practice. It's gonna take some getting used to, especially if you're used to putting your pick down between the strings and just moving it back and forth in tiny little strokes, then this is gonna take some getting used to. But if you wanna play loud and have good tone and be able to pull this off fast too, this is the technique that you need to use. So stop looking for a louder mandolin. Stop looking for the magic pick. If you have a high quality pick, then you're fine. Stop looking for the magic strings. Oh wait, I have a whole series about me looking for the magic strings. Keep looking for the magic strings. Uh, but seriously, stop trying all that other stuff to be loud. It's your technique that needs to change. If you have a super cheap mandolin, then sure, that's not helping you. But even with a super cheap mandolin, if you change your technique, it's going to get louder. So in summary, what you need to do is hold your pick in a good conventional way. It doesn't have to be exactly this way, but you need to get your fingers around the pick enough that it takes the energy coming from your arm and your hand and puts it into the pick. And you need to be holding it just tight enough that it doesn't move around on you. That way, the energy from your arm going into your pick is, well, from your arm and hand going into your pick is going to make it to the strings. A lot of folks lose that energy before it makes it to the string. And then move your pick in a scooping motion. Get your arm involved. Now I'm not swinging my arm back and forth. I'm just swinging my arm from the elbow a little bit while turning my wrist. Get that motion going. And then just practice a lot. Just remember, practice doesn't make perfect, only perfect practice makes perfect. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Click that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And if you're watching on Facebook, make sure to follow this page, like and share. I would greatly appreciate it because it helps to grow this channel and it's a free way for you to do that. I'm starting to get faster at that. Uh, also, for you fiddlers out there, I have a class starting January 23rd. It's going to go for three weeks on Mondays in the evening. It's fiddle licks that changed everything. So I will drop a link down below, even though most of you watching are probably mandolin players. Share it with your fiddle friends, and I know a bunch of you out there, too, play both. So come check out licks that changed everything. And if you missed fantastic chords and where to find them, you can still access all of that material. I'll drop a link below. You can access all the material from the course, all the videos, all the PDFs, and all the audio recordings. All right, everybody. See you in the next video.